Today I wanted to talk about why Fusion will never work as a power source. And I, all my life I keep hearing Fusion will work in 20 years and there's a lot of excitement now that we're really close. Well, there's a lot of problems and there's a reason why it hasn't been done. The biggest problem up front is efficiency. It's true that when you're doing deuterium tritium fusion that you get 17.6 MeV out from one event. But 14 MeV of that is a neutron, which is problematic of getting energy from a fast neutron. And then it takes 100 kV in. And okay, you think I spent 100 kV and I get 17.6 MeV out. That's a factor of 176. I can work with that. Well, maybe you could, except that if you're really lucky, 10% of the time you'll get an interaction, and the other 90% of the time you'll waste the energy. It's not like a star where you get free acceleration energy from gravity. We have to put it in. And then you have all the upfront equipment. You have a vacuum system, you have magnets, maybe lasers, maybe other pumping devices. And then you have to cool all the electronics and all this other equipment, not counting the cooling system to extract heat. So you can lose 30%, 40%. So all of a sudden, you're down to a factor of 12.3x, and now things are getting tight. If you only recover half the energy in the neutrons, then that drops you down to 7.4. And then if you only recover 50% of the heat, that brings you down to 3.7. And then if you're running a gas turbine generator system, then they're only about 35% efficient, so now you're down to 1.3. And then you're looking at line losses, 22.5%, and now you're down to 1. And yeah, you can say, oh, I'll improve this one, I'll improve that one, and, and squeeze a little bit out. And maybe you can, um, but you still have more problems. Number two is the tritium and deuterium fuel itself. Most of the schemes we come up with, tritium would have to come from lithium. But almost the entire world supply of lithium is used in lithium ion batteries. So we don't have enough lithium to do nuclear fusion and batteries. We could do one or the other. And then some other people say, oh, well, I want to do lithium cooling in my fusion reactor. Uh, no, you can't do that. At least, if everyone tried to do that, there wouldn't be enough lithium to go around. The lithium has to go into making fuel. Now, we can come up with new battery technology. So, that would be a necessity to have different battery technology and stop using lithium for batteries. We also have the problem that when you put lithium around your fusion apparatus somehow to try to make tritium, you're only going to get a capture event and lithium fission to produce the tritium about 10% of the time. So right there you've lost efficiency. Now sometimes you can get more than one uh, fissionable isotope, but but you're still not going to make enough fuel to keep going. You can't have a self-sustained fusion reactor that makes its own fuel without an additional source of neutrons. And then also you lose tritium. Some of the tritium, because you're running a vacuum system, some of it gets sucked out the vacuum system. Some of it interacts with other molecules. Hydrogen can go into metals so you lose some of the tritium, and so you are constantly have to replenish the tritium that was lost that never did get fused in the first place. And 
So it means we have to have an outside supply of tritium and deuterium as well. Now, if you want to make it electronically, if you want to do hydrogen hydrogen fusion to try to make deuterium and tritium, that takes more energy than doing the fusion. So coming up with an electronic system brings your energy budget zero or negative, probably negative. So that's not going to work. So that means you have to do it with an easier source of neutrons, which is fission reactors. So in order to make enough tritium to use for fission, you have to make fusion. You have to make a fission reactor to make the tritium. But if you're going to run fission reactors to make the tritium, you might as well just run fission reactors and call it a day. We already have the technology and it's already simple. So there's basically no way to get enough tritium to do the fusion without running fission reactors. And so some people say, well, I'll have a combo reactor. I'll run fission fusion simultaneously so I make fuel to run fusion. And it's like, just run fission, just do a fission reactor. It's simple, it's cheap if we do it right. And the fuel isn't as bad to deal with as people say. Uh, I can do another video on that. So, what improvements do we need? Well, number one, can we run it at lower voltages? So we improve our efficiency from 176x to 1760x, run at 10 kV. If we, if we come up with some efficient way to catalyze the reaction so it can occur at lower voltages, or improve the efficiency so it's better than 1 in 10, it's 1 in 5 instead of 1 in 10 by somehow constraining it. Those are the types of things that that people are trying to work on to try to get the multiples up so that the efficiency is high enough that you can you have 10x going into the heat extraction phase and, or more so that you you know you're going to be over EV. And then better ways of capturing the energy. Can you configure your device so that you capture the heat energy better? because capturing heat energy from a tokamak is not simple because you have this huge device with a little bit of fusion going on and it's designed to not transfer heat, it's designed to hold the heat in. So actually capturing that heat is tough. If you have a device like my little fusion tube, which isn't efficient enough, you have at least a way to cool it. You can cool it directly and capture the heat better. So if you come up with a way to capture the heat better and get high efficiency fusion, then maybe you have a better starting point. And then the other thing would be coming up with a source of deuterium and tritium that's inexpensive and doesn't require fission. But if you come up with an electronic deuterium tritium source efficiently, then you probably don't need to run the fusion reactor. You probably get, if you can do it efficient enough that you can, you don't have to spend much energy on that, you're going to find a way to, to make the process better. And if you're going to do fusion with it, just integrate the whole thing together. And that's a totally different type of a fusion reactor and it involves technological leaps that may not even be possible. So take it all together, fusion is likely never going to work as, as an energy source. And the having the supply of tritium is really the, the deal breaker for it. And people say, oh, well, I'll try to use other isotopes. Well, none of them are that as efficient either. So it's it's likely it never never happened. If if you're 
a teenager in 20 something in 40 years you'll be where I am and physicists will still claim that they're going to get fusions someday in the future and it will always be that way. I hope you liked the video and if you do please like, share it with your friends and subscribe to see more of my videos. And I have some books for sale on Amazon, and I'm a retired independent researcher, so if you buy one of my books, you learn more about quantum field theory or particle theory, and I'll get a little bit of extra income to help me in my retirement, to help me do more videos and, and write more books and papers. So thanks for watching.